Hi guys, welcome to Get A Life, the show where we encourage you to do just that, but also try to empower you with great interviews, great people, great information and insights to get the job done. Joining me this season and every season is the lovely Maritza. Hi Maritza. Hi Craig and hi everyone else. We're going to show you how to be the very best version of yourself with health, wellness, fitness and nutrition tips and so much more. And member three of the team is the lovely Talia. Hi, Ty. Hey, Craig, and hey, everyone. Today we're at Bouncing, having tons of fun, and we're helping you make that change, because that's what this show is all about. And in tonight's show, we're going to meet the amazing Kathy McKenzie from Fire Up Coaching. And Erica King joins us tonight. Then we've got some great tips for your skin. And a mind-blowing reading from our resident psychic and medium. Then we're going to learn about the importance of body movement on your health. First up tonight, we're taking a look at habits. The good ones, the bad ones, and the impact that they can have on your life. And this week, Lucky Me caught up with the lovely Melita from Breaking Bad Habits to discuss all this stuff. Fascinating interview. Stick around. Girls, let's go. Hi everyone, today I'm with Melita from Breaking Bad Habits and we're going to explore how we might Surprise, surprise, break bad habits. Hi. Hi, Craig, how are you? I'm very good. Are you behaving? I'm trying to, trying my best. So you work in and around the whole thing of helping people move from bad habits to good habits on an individual, on a corporate level, basically with humans. That's right. We really work with health conscious people who already know the health information. So they know how to be fit, they know how to be healthy, but they're just fine. They can't break those bad habits that are getting in the way of that good health that they're after. I guess for a lot of people, the theory is not the reality. It's like with eating. We know what to eat, but we don't eat what we know we should eat. Exactly. We... So there's the theory of how do I break a bad habit, but how do we actually do it? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. And the, there's, there's three steps, so it's really about understanding well, what exactly is a habit, mm. what is a bad habit, how do you break it, mm. and then how do you make those good habits that are going to move you towards your health goals. Anything that moves you away from your health goal yeah. is essentially a bad habit. Mm. So if we know what a bad habit is, it's anything that happens on autopilot. And it's estimated that 40% of what we do every day is mm. done on autopilot. Like in, in Australia, how many people would suffer from being a byproduct of their bad behaviours? Well, it's really interesting. There was a, a survey done recently and it said those that attempted a health kick or a diet or an, a new exercise plan, 94% said that they failed, not because of knowledge, but because of bad habits creeping back in. So it's important that we have more good habits than we have bad habits and we start to address those. And the good news is, is that you can actually break your bad habits, you just have to know how. Let's take out cigarettes, let's take out drugs, let's take out alcohol because they're kind of obvious ones. But what else is uh, very prevalent? Look, I find the most common bad habits, in fact the number one habit that, that, that we work with is late night snacking. You know, often people think that it's due to lack of willpower, but what we know about science from science is that willpower is a, it doesn't exist. You know, it's like a muscle, it gets fatigued. So late night snacking is often the most common bad habit. So where you just have that need for something sweet after dinner and that repetitive nature of that moves you further and further and further away from your health goals. And things like the three o'clock sugar hit, that's a very common bad habit. Lack of an exercise habit, one that's automated and ingrained that no matter rain, hail or shine, you're gonna get up and do. So lack of exercise habit. And the other common and, and a growing trend on this right. is one glass of wine turning into a bottle of wine every yeah. night. We're yeah. seeing that as a, as a growing trend of a bad habit, moving people away from their health goals. So not all habits are bad, obviously. That's right. So if our default setting is something that's great, like people always say to me, how do you stay motivated to train? Because you're a hundred years old, but you still train. But I say, I don't need to get motivated because it's locked in. So I don't get up and go, will I, won't I, or oh, can I be bothered? I just go, oh, it's, it's Thursday, I'm training at five. That's right. So is it part of that is just to create new habits that replace the crappy ones? The best thing that you can do is replace your bad habits with good habits. Motivation is what's going to get you started, but yeah. habits is what's going to keep you going. It, motivation it is, it's like, um, I call it a temporary emotion. It's a state we get into, but it's a state that doesn't last. Mm. And as one of the, I guess, the misnomers that people think, oh, 
I've got to stay motivated to stay efficient or productive. That's right. You can use motivation to get you started, but you always want to rely on good habits in place yeah. to keep you going. Yeah, because when something's a habit, there's no need for motivation exactly. because it's a locked in behavior. That's right. Craig. You're very good at this. We should do something next week. Well, let's do that. that shall we? Let's do that. What are we going to talk about next so week? Next week, let's actually take apart bad habits and show viewers how you can actually break a bad habit. We're going to look at the most common one and take you through an example of how you can break those bad habits, moving you away from your health goals. And later, thank you. So guys, go to the getalife.tv website, click through to the Breaking Bad Habits link, and you'll be sorted. Next up, we've got Kathy McKenzie. She's going to be with us every week. She's a personal coach and she's got some great insights into how we can make that change with ourselves and really get a life. I'm really excited to be sharing a journey with you over the next 12 weeks. And part of what makes me so passionate about what I do is understanding what it takes to actually create change in your life. I always find it quite amusing when I'm introducing myself and sharing a bit of my background. I'm the third eldest of 12 children. So I've got three brothers and eight sisters. That is quite a dynamic when you talk about communication. It's really important that we create our own identities, that we don't actually keep referring back to the roles or the rules or where we fit it into the family context. Even if it's positive, we still need to think about who we want to be and how we're gonna to get to that point. And as families and family dynamics change, how you can actually change yourself to stay in a space where those relationships are joyous and where they're happy. Because often what happens is that as things change in family dynamics, relationships sour and people don't know how to get back to that place of joy. The Fire Up actually stands for focus, intention, results, evaluate, upgrade and perform. Because really the first step with people is to notice what their current focus is. So in order to recognise what someone's focus is, we have a whole lot of tools that we, we work with. Our, our conscious mind is very limited. There's only so much that you can consciously pay attention to moment to moment. So over the next 12 weeks, we're going to talk about the ways in which you can enhance relationships. We're also going to work with understanding more about the habits and the thinking that you need to actually change or upgrade if you want to have the kind of life that you want. We've all got bad habits, we've all got patterns that don't serve us. And so we're going to share with you ways that you can actually shift those mindsets that are stopping you from having the great relationships, the health and fitness that you want, or the kind of career that would be really fulfilling and engaging for you. A lot of people think that lots of things need to change for them to actually get the kind of life that they want. What I've learned over the years is that not everything has to change for everything to change. Now what that means is just finding the place in your life where if you can make shifts there, that has a domino effect. So for instance, if someone's under financial stress, that'll have an impact on their relationships, often on their health and fitness, and the way that they actually operate in the world. Getting financially secure will then help them to get more balance in other areas of their life. So that's what I mean. Not everything has to change for everything to change. And for each of us, it's about finding that tipping point. Where is it that you need to start in order to create the life you want? I'm really excited to be on this journey with you. And the parting thought I wanna leave you with is, what is it that you actually want? Ask yourself the question, what do I want? And next week, I look forward to working with you to help you to create what it is that you want. Thanks, Kathy. Looking forward to hearing more from you next week. Coming up, we've got a real treat for you. Pam Bradbury is a psychic and medium, and what she does is pretty incredible. If it seems kind of spooky, watch this next segment, and you'll be a believer too. Hi, I'm Pam Bradbury, a psychic and medium who's been connecting with people for over 25 years. 
Each week, I get at least 100 messages from people all around Australia asking me questions and for help. This season on Get Alive, I'm going to get out there and meet some of these people and together we'll share some of their stories. I met you originally through a phone call from Elise, who contacted me because she knew I was a medium and told me that she'd recently lost her brother. And her brother's name was Dean. And I then suggested that she, you might like to call me and discuss how we could connect you with Dean. So Dean's here to say hello. Now he's talking about somebody called either Luca or Lucas or Lachlan. Lachlan, yeah. And is that a grandson or a family member? My grandson. Your grandson. Now I'm hearing as I'm talking to you that it's his birthday. Is that very soon or just very being? Very soon. He's and can you give soon. me the date of Lachlan's birthday? It's the 8th of February. 8th of February. Well, that's mm. a little while off. Then there must be another birthday in the family, so just think when that will be. Is there something in November, around about the 12th? Yes, but it's not a birthday. Yes, William. It's William. Oh, William, yes. Who, in, and that is William and or Bill? Your niece's son. Your, your niece's son, and that's oh. around about the 12th of that November? Is the 12th. So there's going to be a party. I also know there is a special event happening on that day in the family, in addition to the birthday. So it's a very special time, and Dean will be attending oh. your event on the 12th of November as well, Lise. Now, he tells me he wants to be remembered as a slim, trim chap. He always tried to get to lose weight. <laughs> I think it was a battle he had a lot with yeah. himself in his life, wasn't it? Yeah. Haven't you got a brother, Elise, as well? Another brother, yeah, yes. an older brother. Yes, yes, yeah. And is his name Nick or Nicholas or something similar to that? Kim. So where's the Nick or the Nicholas? Where's that fitting in with the family background? Yes, in that family, that's Elise's friend. That's my papa, my uh, ex -partner. Oh dear. That's OK. That's <laughs> he's still very much. Is it, and did you love him? Did you oh, love him? Oh, I did. You did. Oh. It still does. Still OK, did. well. <laughs> Um, Dean obviously knows all about Nick too. And oh, wants yeah. to be remembered to Nick. Yes, well. Yeah, were they big them. friends? Yeah. Are they? They, they were. Go, yeah? yeah. But Dean is here laughing. Mm. He's got a pack of cards now, mm. and these guys he are all. He's a gambler. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the cards out, and they're playing card games, and they've all got money, and they're putting money on the table. Oh. So they're all there together, happy memories, wonderful times. Well, that's times. something the three of them would certainly share together. Happy, happy yeah. memories. Now, is there anything you wanted to ask Dean yourself today? I just want to say I'm sorry I didn't get on to him for his birthday, but then he would know, wouldn't he, that I was in hospital. He's with you always, and now the relationship with him Whilst we're talking to the invisible world around us, mm. his relationship with you is actually internal. I feel like as if I'm talking to Dean and Bill, but I just, it's amazing. You have turned into Dean mm. and Bill. Mm. They're here to say hello to you. Mm. I can see them all and they've got the smiliest, biggest faces. And every time we make contact with the spirit world in this way, do you realise that we set up the lights in heaven? Oh. So I'm ready to go, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see your name up there, but Ray, right, it's still down here. <laughs> She's a person from up in heaven. You know, she comes through to you, speaks to people, she can see people. Mm -hmm. She's spoken to me about things that I've never had a clue she knew. Mm. And when she'd speak to me, I'd feel that I was talking to do. You know, it was just unbelievable. It's helped me with the rest of my life, I'll tell you. Just knowing her and speaking to her. Because she is definitely someone gifted. that's so not gifted. She's from a different... She doesn't belong down here, she belongs up there, but she's down here to help people, mm. and it does help, believe you.
Now when it comes to fitness, it can't be a once-off thing. Not if you want to look fit and feel healthy. You have to make it part of your life. And Erica is going to show us how. Hello, I'm Erica King. And I'm so excited to be with you over the next 12 weeks because what I'm going to share is lots of tips and tricks and things to keep us really healthy and feeling fantastic. I'm not a celebrity. I don't have a team of people to keep me healthy. So the things that I'm going to share with you are things that I found have worked really well for me and the other people that I work with. So what I'm going to share with you is some fitness, some nutrition, and they've even got me cooking, which is unbelievable. So I hope that you're going to enjoy the journey with me. But today, what I want to start with is your very first challenge, because the thing that really makes a difference is understanding energy in and energy out. So the amount of energy that you consume, the easiest way to think about that is in terms of the calories that you consume every single day. Now, great way to do this is just to pick up your smartphone dial in an app like MyFitnessPal or Calorie King and start to actually add up the calories of the foods that you're eating. Now don't cheat, just put in what you're eating and what you're drinking day to day. I absolutely guarantee that you will be shocked at where the hidden calories are. So that's my first challenge. Count your calories for one week and just really see what it is in fact that you're eating. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you soon. It's important to stay moving. Let's check out this next story from Growing Bones. Hi everyone, I'm here with the lovely Melissa McDougall from Growing Bones. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. So I'm an osteopath, so I work with the body across all ages and we look at using movement to affect physical and emotional health. So for those of us who don't know what an osteopath does exactly, can you talk us through the treatment? We look at taking a thorough case history and then looking at movement patterns to identify any areas that are under stress or strain and then from there we look at treatment. So we, every treatment is different for each individual. So how does it differ to what physiotherapists and chiropractors do? Basically the main difference I feel in osteopathy is that we look at the body as a whole and we try and move the body towards health not just an absence of disease or pain. So a general uh, osteopath appointment, does it include um, massage and manipulation or a com combination of both? Yeah, there is a combination of a little bit of stretching, massage, articulation, sometimes manipulation and then prescription of exercises outside of the treatment room. So when people are with you, you, you treat them, but when they go away from the, the clinic, you also teach them how to maintain feeling good themselves, which is amazing and that's something that's so important. And it is important and, it, and we all have choices and some people do choose just to come to the osteo and get released passively, which we, we apply the treatment to the body. But ultimately, if we want to make a, a permanent change to our body, we do need to do things outside of the osteopathic rooms such as stretches, exercise, diet, all this kind of stuff to bring about a good state of health. Stretches are really important. How important is posture? Also equally important, but that's where stretching comes in. So if we're, we're doing stretches to get us out of this desk posture, that's going to really help. If we do that every day, just like brushing our teeth, it should be part of our lifestyle, not just a thing that we do occasionally when our back hurts. So you've actually come up with a really interesting app too which can follow up your treatment at home. It's called the Osteo Moves app. Tell us a little bit about how it works. A lot of people come into the clinic and I'll show them a stretch that they find is really helpful and they haven't found it anywhere else but it's really not about having a million stretches that you have to do every day. It's about having one or two that are specific for you that you can incorporate into your lifestyle to help yourself. And so with the Osteo Moves app, we try and find out what is best for each particular person by them answering a series of questions that are specific to them. And then it'll tell them whether to heat or ice and then give them a set of exercises that they can do for nine days and chart their pain and chart their movement. So that's really fascinating stuff and thank you for that. What have you got for us next week? So next week we'll be talking about quite a new theory on how movement and emotions are interrelated and how we can move our bodies to influence our emotions. So more on posture 
Uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Great. Guys, if you want more information on Melissa McDougall and Growing Bones, head to our website at getalife.tv and follow the Growing Bones links. Next up, I'm catching up with Con, who is an expert in anything skin related. He's going to be with us every week and show us the top tips on how to get the best out of our skin. <gasps> Skin is such an important part of our body, but unfortunately, so many of us are harming our skin without even knowing it. Today, I'm here with Con from Nutrisynergy, who's gonna tell us about the effects of dry skin and how to resolve it. Thanks, Maritza. You know, a lot of people just don't appreciate the fact that the skin is actually the largest organ in the human body. And its role is very important in protecting us from external irritants in the environment that can cause either skin or internal concerns. Yeah, I've had dry skin for a long time and I mainly get it on my legs and feet and no matter how much I moisturise, it still stays dry. Definitely have dry skin, I've always had dry skin. Um, I think it's just, a, it's just a family thing. Why do you think it's such a common problem that so many of us are having? Well, soaps and detergents probably are the main culprit which are used in most cleansers and washes and they can simply uh, strip the natural oils in the skin and Maritza what that does is it leaves the skin uh, uh, dry and sensitive and allows moisture to evaporate through the skin leads to dehydration and premature aging but also can allow irritants to enter into the skin upsetting the skin and also entering through the skin into the bloodstream can also upset us internally. How do we lock these natural oils into our skin as much as we can? Well, eliminating soaps and detergents are the way to do that. And Nutrisynergy produce a product called Soap Free Wash, which enables us to cleanse the skin without stripping those natural oils so we don't use soaps or chemically derived detergents. So a mild cleansing system means we can cleanse the skin without stripping those oils and dehydrating or damaging the skin. So there's a lot of natural ingredients in this product. That's correct. And natural ingredients are designed to give us the most compatible um, cleansing system without causing irritation or introducing new damage to the skin. I know when I'm dry, I just want to pack my face full of moisturiser and try to get those oils back in. Is that something that I should be doing? Well, it's important to do that. But the thing we need to do first is prevent the damage. So it's important to avoid soaps and detergents. It's also therefore important after we've got to stage one to then say, can we use a moisturiser? And there are petrochemical moisturisers that sit on the outside of the skin, but you can actually do much better using natural emollients that actually are compatible with the skin, are absorbed into the skin, and actually replenish the lost moisture in the skin, the lost lipids that provide that nice protective barrier, and your skin looks, feels much younger, much smoother, and obviously your skin condition is much better. You'll look, you know, half your age instead of double your age. Oh, I like the sound of that. I really love the NS Dry Skin Moisturiser because it is so nice and soft and gentle on your skin. It absorbs really quickly. It's great to put it on just after you've had a shower because it locks in that moisture into my skin. We've got a great offer for all our Get A Life viewers. Jump online at getalife.tv and follow the Nutri Synergy links. Now tell us what you got for us next week, Con. Well, next week, Maritza, we're going to be looking at extra dry and sensitive skin. Perfect. I can't wait to hear all about it. Thanks so much. Well, one episode in and we already have so many great tips and techniques to make our lives and your lives better. For more information on anything you saw on tonight's episode, head to getalife.tv. That's right guys, great information, but remember transformation lives in the application of the information, the doing, not just the knowing. We've had fun, hope you have too. See you next week. Let's go. Let's go. Alrighty. Okay. This tightrope <laughs> is like these girls' minds, somewhat unstable, um, precarious, and a place you don't want. That's fantastic! Now I'm really nervous, because Ty just pulled that out of the bag. <laughs>